I've often wondered when I do lens reviews if I'm being too picky about certain things. And recently topics like focus breathing and chromatic aberration are becoming more and more contentious. So I thought, what if I just get the best lens and use it to set sort of a realistic benchmark of expectations for future reviews? So here we go. The 35 millimeter Signature Prime from Ari may be the best 35 millimeter lens available on the planet. Let's get undone. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald and Dunn, and technically pickles are fruit. All right, for disclosure, Ari did not sponsor this video, and obviously they're not gonna let me keep a $30,000 lens. I did visit the Ari rental in Toronto, though, and I got to do some lens tests with the wonderful staff there. More on that later. This video does have an actual sponsor, though, and that's Storyblocks. Now, I've tested a lot of 35 millimeter lenses. The best for my Sony mirrorless is probably the 35 millimeter G Master. It's optically stunning, not perfect, and it does have notoriously bad focus breathing, but I think it's probably the best overall 35 millimeter lens available for that system. Now I thought when it comes to doing this comparison, I might as well offer up the best lens to compare against the Signature Prime because I've shown some comparisons between the G Master and you know cheaper older 35s and it stomps all over them. So it's not really a fair test to take a lens that's getting stomped all over this one and compare it to the best 35 millimeter lens ever. So let's see how much better the best is over a uh, best photography 35 millimeter lens for Sony mirrorless. And to keep things even, and interesting, I'm doing it on the Sony A1 because this is the same camera that I've used for probably the last two years to do most of my lens reviews for Sony anyway. And to achieve that on the A1 here, we have the LPL to E-mount adapter from Wooden Camera. And I'm actually gonna mount this lens on this camera now so you can see just how absurd this combination was. But it was the only way I could guarantee that the camera wasn't playing a role and everything else was the same. This lens is actually surprisingly light. For the size of it, you might think, wow, that's a monster. And it, it definitely is. You know, like look at a little size comparison to the to the G Master. It, it does look like a giant. It's 1.7 kilos or 3.7 pounds. If I told you this was only a 1.7 kilo lens, you'd be surprised. And in the hand, it's surprising. And it comes with a massive case. And if you pick up the case, it doesn't feel like the lens is in there. It's kind of trippy. Anyway, let's mount it. Now this is not a review of what it's like to wield this thing on a Sony mirrorless camera because that's a ridiculous proposition. But what I can say is it was very difficult to capture even some of the test images with this because the one of the levers for the lock is right where the grip goes. It's really hard to kind of control this and focus. The The focus gear on this thing is definitely set up for you know using it for a motor. It's got like a 300 degree throw. So when you're trying to like focus on something with your hand while supporting it and then realize you gotta travel it quite a ways to get all the way around. I tried tracking my little one-year-old who was running around, impossible. The build quality is, is stellar on this, but given the size and the scope of it, you would think that the, the focus ring and the iris ring actually move lighter than you would think. They're, they require less resistance. Very consistent and smooth, but yeah, it's sort of a lighter touch than I was expecting. And same for the iris ring, but both are, are, are incredibly smooth. It is light, but it's still large. And the exit of the lens is quite large as well. And this is all part of a telecentric design that Ari's working on here, basically to keep your light rays as straight as possible traveling through the lens, instead of you know needing to bend at extreme angles to work your way down such a compact lens like this with a smaller exit. And this means that there are still curved pieces of glass, but they're thinner. That's the trick to stellar lens quality, is large, but it doesn't have to be heavy. Focus on the things that matter, uh, an optical formula that keeps telecentricity without bulking up and causing other problems. And the Signature Prime is probably the perfect balance of that. Now, while talking about manual focus, we should talk about focus breathing because if I'm comparing it to the 35 millimeter G Master, the biggest problem with the G Master is it's terrible focus breathing. So much so that sometimes it feels like you're using a 40 millimeter lens. But the Signature Prime obviously has imperceivable focus breathing. I, I didn't see any at all. It goes incredibly out of focus because the close focus on this thing is way better than I expected too. So that change from minimum focus to infinity is rather drastic, but there's very little, if any at all, movement of the frame. I do have some comparison shots that I wanna show you in Lightroom now between these two lenses. So let's do that. All right, so the first thing I wanna compare here is chromatic aberration. So the image on the right is the G Master, the image on the left is the Signature Prime. Now what we wanna look for is as, the, as these lines go out of focus to the front and the back, is it gonna add magenta and green to those out of focus areas? And the answer is yes, which I was surprised by because RE stands is pretty much that they solve chromatic aberration. And I think that they did in a realistic position, but not if you wanna be pixel peeping at you know 400% or whatever. So if we do zoom right in here, we can see just a minor amount 
of magenta fringing around the white lines. Now, I don't know which one wins because if we zoom in, there's certain areas where like this one, like I can see it there on the G Master and I can see it here. But now up here, is it worse than the G Master? I don't know. You know, like it, they trade off blows. I would maybe give, maybe give it a wash. And this would be an instance where I would say, we should not be critical of this small amount of chromatic aberration on the G Master because it still seems to be present even on the Signature Prime. Now, of course, if you move across in the Signature Prime, it is impressive how it looks out to the edge compared to the, the G Master. Now, there are lenses I've tested that have crazy purple and green, everything all over the place. And I think those ones are still worth pointing out saying, you know, there is noticeable longitudinal chromatic aberration. But maybe what we should be doing is that if you're operating at a zoom like this, and you can't see anything, it, it looks white to you, then anything beyond that is, is not worth considering part of the review. And that's basically what this whole video was about, is are these elements that are worth talking about anymore? And I think if you have, if you have an image like this, then no. That, that might as well get a 10 out of 10 for chromatic aberration because I haven't seen any better. Now let's talk a little bit about distortion. This is the frame here, you can see, you can see your, your lines and all the squares and stuff. It's, it, it's excellent for like th there might be the smallest amount of barrel distortion i don't know i like i can't really see it so maybe maybe not but if you have to debate that much about it i would say that it's not a factor and keep in mind these are not corrected this is not something where you can there's no lens corrections for this lens when shooting on this camera now you can get them with your photography lenses if you turn all the corrections off usually those photo lenses look a lot worse now vignetting and sort of a color tonal consistency is a different thing altogether. The one on the right is the G Master with corrections turned off. And you can see there's significant vignetting. All these tests, by the way, so far have been wide open, which is T1.8 on the Signature Prime and F1.4 on the G Master, which is probably usually about the equivalent. If you see a 1.4, those usually only transmit at about a T1.8. Look at how even it is across the frame on the Signature Prime. And also the white remains, it has a certain neutrality across the frame and this sort of classic RE slight warmness without being inaccurate, if that makes sense. But essentially this might be the best test result for vignetting and, and consistency of the whiteness throughout the frame. You can see actually shadows of me taking the image, but there's no vignetting in that, in that image at all. Okay, now let's talk about the bokeh, which was an interesting comparison here. Now the G Masters are all about their, their bokeh. They're like the best that Sony offers. That's, what make, that's one of the things that makes them the G Master. And they don't beat the Signature Prime. But if we punch in a little bit here, we can, on the G Master, see some texture in the, the little fairy lights in their bokeh. This sort of ringing that's going on here. Now they've done really well to minimize the outer membrane look, but if we compare that to the Signature Prime, the texture inside of this is so much smoother. And that's incredible. Now, this is not what I was expecting, but it gives us another one of those updates to how to review lenses. There's a noticeable amount of cat sighing in the corner on the bokeh here. And there also is on the G Master. But whenever we talked about the G Master, we'd say, oh, it's pretty good, you know? Like, it, it, it doesn't get too cat sigh, just a little bit over in the corner. But if the Signature Prime is going to do that too, maybe we should stop worrying about it. And when I asked Ari about it, they're like, yeah, that's what we do. All lenses do that. We wanted to maintain that. People like that. That's the way that it works. On some lens, like anamorphic, we see that cat's eyes that's happening as we're moving left and right. They said, we like that. I guess as reviewers, we should stop being like, a cat's eyes a little bit in the corner. It's like, yeah, so does the $30,000 Signature Prime. So who cares? And then I did one stop down to 5.6 so we could look at the actual iris blades. And as you can see here, it's an 11 bladed iris in both cases. And maybe at 5.6 is a bit more of the great equalizer between these two lenses. I would still argue that maybe the Signature Prime is a little bit smoother than the G Master, but they're pretty similar at 5.6 now. And what's more interesting is when I was at RE Rental, they showed this case called Impression Filters. Now, I was relatively new to Impression Filters. I know some people know about these already. Four strengths that are positive, they have different characteristics. We have four strengths that are negative. And as we put them on the lens, we're going to see the background and the foreground changing and also that glimmer effect. So on the back of the lens here, there's this little magnetic clip that you can take off. And you can use this to put your own net or whatever material you want to put on there to control the look of your shot but you can also get the impression filters that replace this. All kinds of things happening in here. Okay. It's special sauce. They're almost like a way to detune the lens to a specific look. What, what I love about the Signature Primes, you know, when people talk about cine lenses, they're always like, oh, I want to get this lens or that lens because it has a certain character. And often that character is a flaw. 
So maybe the bouquet is really weird or it's so bubbly or it's swirly or it does this or that. And I'm always put off by the idea, well, what if I don't want that character and I don't want to have multiple different sets of lenses? I'd rather just have a set of lenses that is neutral and pristine and then I guess I can do stuff afterwards. And the Signature Prime, Ari basically agreed. They were like, let's make the Signature Primes flawless and neutral and then we'll use our impression filters to add that character that you might want for a particular project. On the negative, my background comes back because of that halo effect. My foreground disappear, sorry, because of the donut effect. My foreground disappear because of the halo. And on the positive is the opposite. My background disappear because of the halo. My foreground comes back because of the donut effect. My foreground disappear, my background reappear, halo, donut, my center stays the same. Now what I can say is Ari's done a tremendous job of matching all the lenses with the lineup. And there are quite a few other lenses, but if you look at them, the color intention and consistency is amazing across all of their lenses. Where on the photography lens side, it's basically the Wild West. You might get this lens and really like the way that it looks, but then you shoot with another Sony lens of a similar age and class, and maybe it doesn't quite look the same. Heck, the three lenses I'm using in here right now don't look the same. I got two that match and one that doesn't, so I have to change it. That's something you wouldn't have to worry about, and, and Ari's done a really good job with that. But in terms of whether it's superior color or the color you like, again, there's a lot of subjectivity in that. But I'll tell you what, I'm gonna mount this monstrosity on that camera there. Okay, here we go. I've got the lens mounted on my a7 IV over there. The field of view isn't the same, obviously, because I was using, I think I was shooting at like 50 mil uh, on, the, on the previous shot, now this is a little bit wider. And I didn't want to switch to APS-C mode because I thought that might change the image more than just showing you a slightly wider field of view. And I've got my color chart here so that we can look at the neutral grays and also I can show you the vector scope to see what the color accuracy is like. And then I've got my script for Storyblocks over here, the sponsor of today's video, because I didn't want to put it on a teleprompter because I didn't want to put a teleprompter on the end of that lens and corrupt the whole test. Although, I don't think I could even fit my <laughs> my tiny little compact <laughs> teleprompters. Can you imagine seeing a little parrot padcaster on the end of Signature Prime? Anyway, Storyblocks is a stock media platform that boasts a massive library of high quality assets aimed to strengthen your video production. Their subscription model provides predictable costs without any paperclip pricing. Just pick a plan, pay that fee, and that's it. And you'll enjoy unlimited downloads of HD and 4K video files, images, and motion graphics templates. And the platform is intuitive and easy to use, and new content is added regularly to ensure you have access to up-to-date assets to satisfy your project. And if you're an Adobe Creative Cloud user, you can now access the entire Storyblocks library right in Premiere Pro or After Effects by installing a clever little plugin, which can really speed up your workflow. And whether it's those motion graphics or the high-quality stock footage, remember that with Storyblocks, anything you download is 100% royalty-free forever with no restrictions on where you can distribute your finished projects. So to get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head to storyblocks.com undone or click the link in the description. All right, I got a couple more test images to show you in Lightroom here. This one is about close focusing. Now, I don't have the Sony shot in here, but it's on my computer, so I'll put it up in post. They were very, very similar uh, in terms of how close they can focus. And like I said, this, the G Master was my favorite for that. I like a 35 mil lens that I can get really close and create sort of these sort of weird abstract worlds. And what's crazy is how close you get because the, the lens is so long and it's based on the sensor, you actually get like crazy close to the lens when doing it on the Signature Prime. Now, I know there's people that care about sun stars and like to talk about sun stars in reviews. I usually include them to satisfy those people. And in this instance, I would say the, the G Master has more symmetrical sun stars. The Signature Prime has sort of some interesting character here. But if you wanted a more perfect round, the G Master does that. And then if we talk about flare in the same instance, the G Masters are supposed to be really good for flare. Now, neither one of these had anything on them, no hoods, no anything, just letting the sun get right in there. The G Master has less pronounced artifacts. We can see here on the Signature Prime that we have some colors and they're they're sharper and they kind of stand out there. But the G Master has larger and more significant effects across the frame. By the way, this is an example of the mount adapter coming into the shot there, those little black edges. If we look at the next frame for both of these, you can see what I'm talking about. So again, yeah, more pronounced artifacts on the Signature Prime. But look what's happening over here. On the Sony image, the effect of the sun is darkening this whole area here to where we can't, we don't get as many details or as much color. But then if we look at an area that's supposed to be black around the sun, I don't know how this is gonna show up on YouTube. On this one, it's a neutral black on the Signature Prime, but on the G Master, it actually has sort of like a faded brown weirdness in the contrast there. Now, I was gonna do my own gamut of sharpness comparisons, but there was no need to because when I was at RE Rental, they had this great setup 
where they had this projector in the other room that I, I so wish that I had, but it's probably some special crazy expensive projector and it's mounted for like PL mount and stuff like that. And then rather than light coming through the lens and being projected onto the sensor, it instead is reversing it and it's putting light through the lens and shooting it onto a wall. And they have this reticle that they can insert into the projector that puts onto the wall and through the lens, basically like a focus chart which is so cool to see. And I don't think that capturing it is gonna show the same thing that you see in person, but basically even in the corners, you can see these line pairs, you know, like 80, 100, 140 line pairs to see if you can make out the individual lines and how they're separated. And then it has these markers for the different sensor sizes. RE Rental was really gracious with their time. They, they went through and put some vintage lenses on, put different RE lenses on, like their Master Primes and so on. And when you look at some of those old lenses, you're looking at some like, also some older photography lenses in the same sense where you're like, oh yeah, you know, it's soft in the center. Like, oh, there's chromatic aberration, it's distorting out to the side or whatever. And then they put it on the signature prime and not only is the image circle incredible that it's this, ma this is the cool thing is you don't always get to see the image circle, right? We always take pictures with the camera. So we're only seeing what the sensor is already sort of punching out of the lens. What was so cool about this projector is we get to see the entire image circle. So even the parts of the image that are never gonna be captured by anything because they're outside of the largest sensors that we even have. Anyway, what's crazy with the Signature Prime is unlike all the other lenses that we went through, when they switched over to it, it is just sharp everywhere. Because wow. if we close it, wow. we would have had something much nicer. <laughs> but now if we look at, the first thing I'm gonna check is resolution, and I can see by 140, no problem. I'm looking over here at the corner, and it's, yeah. I could count all the bars, and like, even the smallest, line pairs it was it was incredible like i said i want that projector but the ability the genius ability over here for the impression filters is really what sets this lens apart i think is being able to add that character to your lens for the project without destructively changing the brilliance of the signature prime just don't try to mount it on your sony mirrorless camera and run around because that's absurd all right, I'm done. <laughs>